called the meeting to order at 6.30 of the Board of Directors. Director Jenner is on his way. He's in a family conflict, so he will be here. Um, we're expecting him just any minute. So with that, um, Director Avila, would you like to lead us in the play? Place your hands over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Director Agla. Here. Director Garrett. Director O'Brien. Here. Vice Chair Freeman. Here. Chair Freeman. Thank you. Was there any changes to the agenda? Chair staff has no recommended changes and is open to any suggestions from the board. <laughs> Public statements are for items that are not on the agenda. Ah, Director Dunnert's here. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on an item that is not on the agenda? I have a card here. Are you Brian Holter? Yes. Okay. I have a I have an agenda item. I'm sorry, you can proceed. My name is Brian Hubbard. I am a resident of Simi Valley for the last couple of years. Moved from San Fernando to Simi, looking for a better place for my kids to grow up. Is your mic on? Can you hear me? There you go. Closer. Um, I come tonight to talk about the condition of the Playground equipment at Rancho Tapo Community Park. There's three jungle gyms that are all in pretty sad state of disrepair. Re three of the five slides are missing. The plastic bridges are starting to crumble, so it's kind of dangerous for the kids to play. So I just want to make sure that uh, you guys were aware of that. Appreciate you telling us that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see staff is taking notes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comments on items not on the agenda? I do. I'm on Zoom, though. I'm not in person. Okay, go ahead. It's an item not on the agenda, Ms. Moore? It's not on the agenda, but it was just discussed okay. here on my own as well. My name is Carissa Moore. I've been a resident of Simi Valley for 33 years. Um, I also have noticed the degrade of the playgrounds at Lemon Park, Rancho Tapo Park. Uh, so I wanted to bring that to your attention and a lot of, I'm a mom of a two-year-old and a four-year-old and we frequent this park often and before the slides were removed they were a hazard because of the cracks that happened in the slides. My two-year-old has slid down and cut himself on them. Um, I'm happy now that they are at least removed and he's not getting hurt by that but it's still a hazard that the slides are not there because while he is old enough big enough to climb up the playgrounds the ones that are specifically for smaller kids, he's not able to get down unless he goes down the slide without assistance, of course. Um, and so one of the slides has been missing for over a year, it has not been there, and then the other playgrounds now have two slides missing. So I think it's really important that this is called to your attention and corrected. And then on a slightly less important note, but still important, and I've heard this complaint from several parents as well, is the wood chips are quite a bit of a hazard. There's not many parks left in Simi that have the wood chips. They're either the rubberized ground or the sand even. Um, the wood chips are a hazard. They get into their shoes. They've even poked through rubber soles. Being so close to the splash pad, which I'm sure you guys are all aware, is very popular and we love it. The kids are most of the time barefoot hanging on the splash pad and then they'll run over to the playground and the wood chips are now on their bare feet and very dangerous. So that is all. I wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. And I hope something can be done about it. Dan, I know it's not on the agenda, so we're not going to discuss that at length, but can we get just a, a brief? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, we'll definitely reach out to the two folks that have spoke. Uh, I know that Wayne uh, has removed, or crews have removed the slides. The slides are on order in terms of the slide replacement. Uh, wood chips are a standard in some of our parks. A lot of people like them and some don't. Um, so we do use wood chips a lot. Um, we can take a look at that as well at that particular <coughs> but the slides are on order. 
um, without uh, making excuses. Um, we're having a heck of a time getting playground equipment um, overall, and not just us. A lot of park districts are having trouble getting playground equipment. So Dan, as a board member, is there anything we can do? Is it like we're not budgeting enough money to buy it, or it's not available to purchase? No, there's plenty of uh, plenty of funds available. It's just uh, it's an ordering issue, is what it is. A backlog issue on getting the equipment delivered to us from the manufacturer. Thank you. So it's more of a supply chain issue, too. Correct. Yes. And we, I know our crews have, our, and Wayne has constantly put pressure on them to get our equipment. We routinely follow up with the manufacturer, and they are aware of we need playground equipment, and we constantly ask them, and they say they're getting it to us as soon as we can, as soon as they can. So. <coughs> Is there any other person on Zoom? Okay. Excuse me, that has an item that is not on the agenda that they would like to address at this time? Hearing none, is there anyone else in the audience who has an item that is not on? With that, I will move on to approval of the minutes. Items five. I have one change. Paragraph two of the minutes has the chair, vice chair lineup incorrect. It's from last year. Uh, it says Director Freeman, Vice Chair Gray, and Chair O'Brien. I am no longer chair. Gray, um, Josh Gray is now chair, and Director Freeman is now vice chair. That was the only change I had. Are there any other corrections or additions to the minutes? Do I have a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. Second? I'll second that with that amendment. Roll call, please. Director Avila? Aye. Director Dennis? Here. Yes. Director O'Brien? Yes. Vice Chair Freeman? Yes. Thank you. Consent calendar. Those items include approval of the 316 and 331 accounts payable, check registers, and the 310 mm -hmm. and 324 payroll check registers. And item B is the award of approval award of a contract for tree trimming and printing services here at the activity center. Are there any questions on any of those items? I have a comment, not really questions. It's on the accounts payable check registers. I find them very difficult. This, this time I found them very difficult to read. They were, um, the typeface was very small and the numbers, the dollar figures didn't seem to be lined up with the item, line item. And it was, the, I had to take a ruler and go, which is, which, you know. I found it, um, I don't know what we're doing different, but I found it difficult to read. Okay, we will get that corrected. Thank you. Any other comments? Chair, we should ask for public comment as well under the consent agenda. Was there anyone in the public who has comments on either of these items? Is there anyone on the Zoom that might have a question or comment on these items? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. Roll call. Uh, Director Abel? Aye. Director Dennert? Yes. Director O'Brien? Yes. And Vice Chair Freeman? Yes. Now we'll go to presentations, scheduled items, and public hearings. The first item is the presentation of the full-time employee of the month for March 2023 through DD Liz. Recreation Coordinator. Thank you, Chair. Teresa Pennington, the District's Director of Administration, will provide staff's report. Thank you, Honorable Chair and members of the Board. It's my pleasure to present the Employee of the Month Award to Jeannie Litz. She has been with the District for 17 years. This is her fifth Employee of the Month Award. The person who nominated Jeannie stated, Jeannie is the Park and Museum Coordinator at Stratton Historical Park. She handles the day-to-day -day operations, such as park rentals, daily events, and daily tours. She coordinates these events with volunteers and staff, so everything runs smoothly. Jeannie has been with Rancho Simi for many years, and in those years, she has stepped up and taken on responsibility of all tasks assigned. She began her career with Rancho in the administration department, where she was responsible for payroll. She then moved to head up the volunteers for the recreation department and did a brief stint at Oak Park Community Center and she's currently settled in at Stratton Historical Park. 
Jeannie is a hardworking individual who takes pride and joy in putting a great product forward. She takes on a multiple of multitude of responsibilities and works tirelessly to accomplish them. In addition, she manages events such as the annual Veterans Day Ceremony, the Heritage Halloween event, the Spring Wildflower Walk, which is part of the newly instituted emphasis on outdoor programming, just to mention a few. For these reasons and many others, Jeannie is deserving of the Employee of the Month recognition. So Jeannie, you want to come on up? Thank you. Thank you to whoever nominated me. I am very grateful and uh, humble for this award. Um, there are a lot of employees here who really work very hard and are very deserving of this award. So I, I appreciate the nomination and the award. Um, and I just have been here for so many years, for 17 years, and I love the park district. I am very grateful to be able to have moved from administration to recreation and now I'm planning and maintenance. And I've gotten huge view on everything. Um, so I'm very grateful for where I'm at and for the opportunity to be here. So thank you. You know, Jeannie, there, there's two things that just stand out for me. One, um, I think you know um, uh, how much I care about the Veterans Day event. I've worked with you on that before, and you've just been great. Um, and then the other thing, um, I, I still remember from about a year and a half ago, the remarkable job you did of looking at our um, rental, wedding rental rates and uh, facility rates at uh, Strather Park, um, which is you know making a big difference in terms of our revenues. Um, that was just outstanding work, and, and I, I appreciate you so much. And I, I even, I, I'm even going to throw a shout out to you that um, uh, I talked to many people on it, but you took some time to talk to me recently about the um, state of the city address. And um, I really appreciate everything about you. I think you're awesome, and more than deserving of this award. Thank you very much. Any other comments? No, I just I've, I've known Janice since she's been here, and you've always been. A cheerful presence and a hard worker, and I'm glad you got this award. Thank you. I'm a, I have confidence that our new emphasis on the outdoors, that you're in charge of that, mm -hmm. that makes me feel good knowing uh, it's in good hands. Thank you. Uh, I like that you don't know who nominated you because it could have been so many people that it could have been, and that you're humble and said other people are deserving the award, but tonight's your night. And for our Veterans Day, when uh, the board presents and we look good, I know that there's a lot of people behind the scenes that put together everything and made it look good, so we're ready to go. So I appreciate that help too. Thank you very much. Sure, I'd recommend a photo with the chair or and the, or the full board. I would just like to comment. I'm going to comment for the chair, Judge Gray, because I'm sure if he was here, he'd give you a big shout out for all you did for his wedding at <laughs> Strather. But also, let me comment on that. You do an incredible job in representing the district. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are wearing matching colors. Yes, we have match. We talked. Tournaments. 
helps schedule and oversee staff, manages the concessions as well as other duties. Megan is truly a team player. Megan is prompt, responsible, and strives to do a great job. She's insightful, intelligent, and takes pride in completing tasks. Megan has been a wonderful addition to Rancho Cini. Due to her hard work and flexibility to assist where needed, she deserves the Employee of the Month Award. Thank you so much. That was very kind. I said that. I'm very grateful. And I really enjoy working with the district and helping out where I can. And it's a great start. Um, I just graduated from CSUN with my rec um, major or bachelor's. So working with the district is just a nice entrance for my career. And I really appreciate it and enjoy working here a lot. <laughs> So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm looking forward to continue developing your skills and taking on new challenges and uh, opportunities. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, I'll just say congratulations. Um, the after school clubs and the team club mean a lot to a lot of us here, and so appreciate everything. Let me just say that your ability to volunteer and do whatever it takes take you a long way. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. National Water Safety Month in May through Education and Programming Verbal Report by Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. Danielle Jim and Ms. Pirick will present staff's report. Good evening, Vice Chair and members of the board. <clears throat> Excuse me. I stand here tonight with Aaron Pirick, Recreation Coordinator, to recognize the National Water Safety Month and Rancho Cime Recreation and Park District's commitment to water safety and aquatic programming. National Water Safety Month is an annual awareness campaign coordinated by the Pool and Hot Tub Association in support from the American Red Cross, National Drowning Prevention Alliance, National Recreation and Park Association, and the World Water Park Association. Water safety is important because it only takes a moment for something to happen. A child or a weak swimmer can drown in the time it takes to reply to a text check a fishing line, or apply sunscreen. Death and injury from drownings happen every day, and the Red Cross believes that by working together to improve water competency, water activities can be safer for all participants involved. Water competency in includes three main elements, swimming skills, water smarts, and helping others. Swimming skills include the ability to enter water that is over your head and return to the surface. The ability to float or tread water for at least a minute knowing how to turn over or around in the water, and the ability to swim at least 25 yards and exit the water appropriately. Water smarts includes knowing your limitation, including any physical limitations one might have or any medical condition, as well as having knowledge and the ability to adjust during the current water environment. You should never swim alone or under the influence and should wear a US Coast Guard approved life jacket appropriate for your weight and size during any water activity. Swimmers and those supervising youth should also understand the dangers of holding your breath and keep an eye out for those behaviors. Helping others includes paying attention closely to children or weak swimmers under your supervision when or near any water. Knowing the signs of drowning and the ways to safely assist a person, such as a reach or throw, don't go, and knowing CPR and first aid are also helpful tools. This year, Rancho Simi is enhancing its commitment to water safety by offering a water safety awareness class for families. This will occur on Saturday, May 13th from 1 to 4 at the Rancho Pool. This serves to create awareness and educate our community on ways to become safer in and around the water. The class is designed for the entire family, and though it is designed to be affordable, there are scholarships available for anyone who cannot afford the program. The program will also feature educational stations, which include the importance of wearing a certain color bathing suit, learning how to correctly pick out and put on a life jacket, basic CPR skills, 
learning what to do when you fall in a pool, or to helping save others who fall in as well. Practicing getting help by calling 911 or asking a lifeguard for assistance, as well as teaching kids who can swim, they're invited to do a practice test with us in the pool. With drowning as a leading cause of death for children ages one to four, Rancho Simi has had a long history and strong commitment to providing swim lessons. Learning to swim can reduce the risk of drowning by almost 88% for this particular age demographic if formal lessons are taken. Rancho Simi offers swim lessons for ages six months to adults in both private and public settings. In fact, we already have um, a large attendance for our spring classes, so we're very excited about that despite the cool weather we've been having. In addition to Rancho Simi's swim lesson offerings, though, we also offer a junior lifeguard program during the summer, adult swimming, which includes lap swimming, water fitness, and our newly launched swimming class program. Our commitment to safety continues with offerings in certified classes such as CPR, first aid, AED, and lifeguarding. Programs such as dive and movies, open swim, aqua palooza, and splash and dash are other opportunities for families to become acquainted with and participate in water activities. I thank you for your continued support of the aquatics program. Erin and I are here to answer any questions that you might have about Water Safety Month or the aquatics program. Director, do you have any questions? No, I think this is a really good idea, excellent idea. Yeah, we had a, one of our former board members had a grandson who had a drowning accident, which I'm sure you remember. That was, you know, glad we're doing it. And board will put in, be putting out public information and educational materials to uh, help make our community safer relative to water safety. So thank you. Any other questions? Hello, board. Is there anyone um, in the audience who has any questions? Any comments from anyone on Zoom? Thank you very thank much. You. to item D, recognition of Earth Day Award winners for their contribution to environmental stewardship and sustainability. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Miller uh, will provide staff's report, Director of Recreation. Good evening, uh, Vice Chair Friedman, Board of Directors. Tonight we're here to officially recognize the winners of our 2023 Earth Day Awards. These individuals we are recognizing tonight took time and energy to try to improve their communities through environmentally focused projects. The way we'd like to, for this to work tonight is that we will read a little bio on each group, have them come up and take a picture with our board members. At the conclusion of those awards, we would like one group photo with all the winners um, so that hopefully we can get that posted in the ACORN this week. So first up, I have Lucas Medina and Annie Zerm Zermano. Lucas and Annie, if you're here, come on up. Lucas and Annie organized more than 50 young people from multiple schools to help clean up the Arroyo. They pulled out shopping carts, many bags of trash, and a dancing cactus, which I have no idea what it's about, but I want to hear more about it. Uh, their service club, Echoes Chicos, promotes awareness of environmental issues while serving our community. By getting people to have fun while protecting our environment, they get uh, people to want to do it even more. Their cleanup, after their cleanup, they did research on sustainability and presented it to students at Royal High School as part of their Reagan Citizen Scholar Service Project. Congratulations, Lucas and Annie. Come on up here, we'll get a photo with the uh, chair. Would you mind taking a photo? We're gonna get a big group. We'll do, we'll do individuals with each group, and then we'll do a big group at the end if you don't mind. Thank you. generation of environmentalists and volunteers and I can see with your club and your enthusiasm that's working the you had a massive group out, out there taking action I tried to best you I was prepared to pull out shopping carts I brought equipment and rope and then you still found more shopping carts than me so congratulations on that I also like that you don't just clean up the mess of other people but you reflected on policies that could prevent the mess in the first place so thank you okay next up is um, 
Madi Alua, if I didn't say that right, you can correct me. Uh, Madi is the leader of CKI, a service club connected with Kiwanis International and the Muslim Student Association of Moore Park College. He's organized trail cleanups at Corganville Park, Rocky Point Natural Park, and Hummingbird Trail. He has hiked difficult trails while carrying supplies and has fun while doing it. He brings many student volunteers with him from his college each time he heads out. Madi plans to study GIS and environmental science at UC Davis next year. Go Aggies, I'm an Aggie. He clearly has a passion for the environment and for volunteerism. Monty, come up to receive your award. Up, we have Michael Palma. Michael enjoys mountain biking and wants to improve the trails for all riders. You can see him often riding up the hills with tools on his back to fix our trails. After the recent rainstorms, he fixed many trails that were washed out. This has improved the safety and fun for mountain bikers. Michael takes pride in learning how to fix a trail properly and has shared his knowledge with many other volunteers. If you enjoy riding mountain bikes locally, you should thank Michael and others like him who take the time to volunteer. Michael, please come up. I'm actually present via Zoom. Thank you, Michael. We'll be sure we get our certificate to you. Uh, we'll coordinate that after this meeting. Thank you. Really appreciate it and just doing my part. Michael, I know that you're humble about it, but I appreciate it because you get out there where other people might not be able to get to on your mountain bike. And I've seen you out there and I appreciate it just as a hiker and biker myself. Thank you. Of course, Brian, I look forward to working with you for future uh, trail advocate maintenance cleanup and getting the mountain bike community together to see how we can lend a hand. Excellent. Congratulations again, Michael. Okay, next we have the Oak Park Fire Safe Council. The Oak Park Fire Safe Council was founded in 2021 and operates with the main purpose of assisting with the protection of property and life from wildfire within Oak Park and its surrounding communities. As a community that was directly in the path of destruction of the Woolsey Fire in 2018, residents of Oak Park understood the value of prioritizing long-term fire resiliency. In 2023, the Oak Park Fire Safe Council worked diligently to create a draft community wildfire prevention plan to outline protection of essential infrastructure and reduce ignitability throughout the area. These efforts not only contribute to a safer community, but also prioritize environmental benefit for the future. Tonight we have Jay Fernandez from the Oak Park Fire Safety Council that is representing the entire group for their efforts in the past year. Jay, would you like to come up? Next up, we have Boy Scout Group 633 and Girl Scout Group 1633. The Boy and Girl Scout troops we are honoring tonight organized cleanups of the Arroyo Bike Path, trash pickup at parks, and along the Black Canyon, and graffiti removal along the Santa Susana Mountains surrounding Simi Valley. The troops took part in the brush, also took part in brush cleanup at Sage Ranch this past year. The troop is actively involved with the Kiwanis Club to keep the Roundup Music Festival clean and clear of trash when we have that event in our parks. They promoted recycling collected and collected items at the event to recycle. Even when traveling to San Diego for their summer camp, the troop offered assistance clearing and lining paths between campgrounds to keep natural brush protected from foot traffic and cleaned up trash from the campground while they were there. This group each week recites and discusses the outdoor code. The outdoor code is, as an American, I will do my best to be clean in my outdoor manners, be careful with fire, be considerate in the outdoors, and be conservation minded. So all those representing the boys or Girl Scouts, please come on up. You go. 
Do you have a There's a few we have both. Yes, it's actually, go ahead, George. It's actually the Scouts BSA, the girl troop. Okay, we, okay. we can. We, girl. Come on up front, we'll get a photo with you guys. Oh, right. yeah. This is Miller, the Scouts for the girl troop. Mr. Miller, the Scouts. Fantastic. and Jeff Hatch from the uh, uh, golf course. So Wanda Moyer is the City of Simi Valley's Environmental Compliance Program Coordinator for Water Conservation and has the responsibility of informing the community of the city's latest water reduction requirements, promoting turf reduction rebate programs, and has the arduous, arduous task of dealing with the city's single largest water consumer, the Rancho Simi Recreation and Park District. <laughs> Ms. Moyer assisted the Park District's and Maintenance Department with the establishment of our water conservation program over the past year. With Ms. Moyer's assistance, the Park District achieved an overall 29% reduction in water usage during the peak of the water shortage. Understanding the need for recreational activities, Ms. Moyer was instrumental in the establishment of a passive versus active turf area ordinance, which allowed for special exemptions for the Park District on our actively used turf areas. For this and for many other reasons, we would like to thank Ms. Moyer on her water conservation accomplishments throughout the City of Simi Valley. Thank you. Opportunities and to come here tonight to the facility that we have here is such a treat. And thank you thank all you. so very much for everything you do to our community. It has had impact on generations past, current, and future. And, and I'm a living testament to that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That team kept our parks green during an epic drought, so thank you. Absolutely. And on that note, uh, uh, we would also like to recognize the uh, Rancho Senior Recreation and Park District's irrigation team that face many challenges in reducing water uh, throughout our district. Three employ employees specifically <coughs> had a huge part in achieving the 29% reduction we were able to do. These employees, Ryan Picklesheimer, Fidencio Seha, and Alberto Cardenas, had to monitor and reduce watering programs on 87 irrigation controllers throughout our district. They repaired broken main lines quickly and readjusted irrigation heads on a daily basis to avoid wasteful water overspray and performed emergency repairs and shutdowns after hours and on weekends when issues arise. At our golf courses, Jeff Hatch was integral in the efforts at Simi Hills and Sinaloa golf courses to meet the challenges of reducing water consumption while still maintaining playing conditions. This was more uh, this was all the more difficult given the demand for golf had increased during COVID by about 30% at our courses. By implementing various strategies like hand watering greens, utilizing wetting agents, and watering during off-peak hours, Jeff and his crew were able to reduce water usage by over 20% while minimizing the impact on the playing conditions at our courses. Of course, the reduction in water resulted in drier turf conditions, but by targeting the cuts out <laughs> to the play areas and reducing evaporation losses by watering at night, Jeff and his crew were able to maintain playing conditions and keep golfers happy while achieving the goals set forth by the city and the district. So if those employees are here this evening, please come up and get your certificates. Thank you. 
you get a photo just for this moment. Again, we would like to congratulate all those that received recognition this evening, and we are very proud of our dedicated employees that have devoted time and energy to meet our goals during this water crisis. Uh, that concludes my report. I'd love to have all the winners come up for one last group photo. That would be really excellent. Before you do that, oh. can I say one thing about Ryan here? Uh, Ryan came out tonight. Ryan is an exceptional employee. He, is, he does just what? Oh, I'll use the mic. I thought everybody could hear me, but um, Ryan is an exceptional employee, and hopefully I'm not embarrassing him a little too much here tonight. Um, he is the heart of the district when it comes to irrigation. This guy can't say no. I've seen him working on hour, after hours on his own time, not charging the park district. He comes out for every weekend call. I don't get the weekend calls anymore. He takes care of them. <coughs> Ryan is the one who did most of the calculations to get the water down to 29%. All I did was tell him cut the water, and he had to do all the work. I had the easy part. He had the tough part. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And he did keep our parks green. So I want to thank Ryan and his crew for doing the best job I've ever seen in water reduction. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the staff, I want to, uh, we have, a, as the board knows, we have a long history of volunteers and the contributors from the community. As the stewards of the open space and the parks, um, we heavily rely on volunteers like these and folks that contribute and uh, go above and beyond the, uh, what our staff does. So thank you very much. Thank you to the city for working with us on ensuring that we still had safe parks during the drought. Thank you to Jay and the water, uh, the fire uh, community for working with us on making Oak Park safer for fire resiliency. So thank you all. Can I make one correction? The girl troop. 1633 is part of Scouts BSA, and they're not part of the Girl Scouts of America. Perfect. One, two, three, I'm going to take a couple. Thank, Thank you. you. We're taking one last selfie. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got you all. Almost. Okay. I got you. Well done. <laughs> We will be letting the communities know all about your guys' efforts, so thank you. I'd just like to comment on behalf of the Board of Directors and the whole Park District. Volunteerism and the caring of our community is what makes us special. And I really appreciate all your dedication and time and effort. And there are benefits to everybody, not just the district, but the community as a whole. Thank you. I want to add to that that if today is like any other day, you'll see somebody, some young person got in trouble or did something, and people are going to complain online about that. But there's more good people doing good work every single day, and that should be a better focus in our community. So thank you all. Thank you. Uh, continue business. Chair, can we take a short break just for people that want to exit? I'm sorry? Uh, can we take a two-minute break, please? I'll be quick. Break? Yep. Okay. Uh, we'll be back here at seven fifteen. I think we got past the deacon business, but there was none. Now I'm to new business. Item A: Authorization to solicit bids for the Royal Me. Greenway Trail Phase 4 construction project. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Mr. Wayne Nakaoka, the director, district's director of planning and maintenance, will provide the report. Vice Chair Friedman, members of the board. Uh, to provide the working drawings for the Royal Senior Greenway Phase 4 construction project, the board awarded a design services agreement to Westland Civil Engineering on August 19, 2021. Uh, the Arroyo Simi Greenway for Phase 4 construction project will renovate the existing asphaltic bikeway between Sequoia Avenue and Tapple Street on the north side of the Arroyo Simi. 
and provided a bike way between Tapa Canyon Road and Tapa Street on the south side of the Arroyo Senior. As with pre previous phases, the project will include new decorative wrought iron entrance gates, park site amenities, and educational interpretive signage. Uh, construction plans have been approved by the city's public works department and the county's watershed protection district. Funding for the project is derived from $1 million from a Prop 68 grant that we got from the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, $100,000 in matching funds from the city of Sydney Valley, $100,000 in matching funds from the Park District, and $62,000 of in-kind contributions by the Park District. Uh, Douglas Duran, the project manager for the project, is here tonight. Just in case there are any questions or technical questions I can't answer about the project, Douglas is in the back hospital. Um, at this time, staff is requesting that the board authorize the solicitation of public bids for the Royal Singing Greenway Phase 4 construction project. And I'm here to answer any questions. Is the board have any questions of staff? No questions, just a comment after we get public on. Um, I will open the public hearing, but is there anyone on Zoom? or in the public that would like to address this item. Hearing none, um, no comments from the board? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I just think um, this is an exciting time. Uh, I think everyone knows um, uh, you know, how, how I've been pushing this project. And I, what really is exciting for me is that, you know, how the pace sped up thanks to one citizen representing a group and, and then, um, how our board and the city work together to approve the project um, uh, uh, as soon as we could. Um, we all know that since the pandemic, the use of the Greenway um, has just exploded. So um, this is a great thing. And I know there may be other comments, but um, I'll just go ahead and make the motion at this time to authorize solicitation of public bids for the Arroyo Simi Greenway Phase 4 construction project. I'll second. Uh, I plan to support that motion, but I just have a couple of questions. One of them is for the educational interpretive exhibits. We don't need to address that tonight, but uh, I have some input or questions about them. We can probably just talk at a different time. And then uh, Tapo Canyon uh, going east is a very high curve. Uh, and I know that there's a workaround and all that, but as part of this project, we reduce the size of that curve. Can I answer that? Yeah. <coughs> we <laughs> That's a great question. We met with the uh, traffic engineer, city traffic engineer, and we have approved that to basically do a uh, uh, driver approach. So in other words, we're going to eliminate that curve and, and create a, a driver approach so that it's easy access to, to bikers and, and, and pedestrians. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, the board will close the hearing. <clears throat> Roll call, please. And Director Avila? Aye. Director Dennett? Yes. Director O'Brien? Yes. And Vice Chair? Please. Yes. I think this is another perfect example of how working together can create success. Um, the district couldn't do it on their own, and the city couldn't do it on their own, and the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy couldn't do it on its own. And coming together created this wonderful opportunity for Simi Valley. So I think it's great. Thank you. Item B, authorization to increase district manager project contingency for the Medea Creek Wildlife Wildfire Resiliency Hawkeye <coughs> Removal. And I'm sure this has been very frustrating. Yes, it has. Mr. Uh, will provide the report. Vice Chair Friedman, members of the board. Uh, at its meeting on February 2nd, 2022, the board awarded a contract to SGD Services or SG, SDG Enterprises, DBA Four Seasons Landscape in Van Nuys, California, for the Media Creek Wildfire Residency Palm Tree Removal Project in the amount of $69,000. From the start, uh, the project was delayed by the California Department of Fish and Game due to bird nesting season requirements uh, until August 2022. Four Seasons Landscape did start the project in the latter part of August of 2022. Um, we got done about 50% of the project. Um, 
at which time we found a small flooded stream bit um, <coughs> pond that uh, was deemed by our outside biologists as a uh, prime southwestern pond turtle habitat. Um, our biologists did notify the Department of Fish and Game. Uh, no turtles were found in the vicinity of the project. Um, but Fish and Game decided to make us do additional surveys and provide additional mitigation for the project. Um, our biologist consultant in ICOM provided additional surveys and reports and submitted an amendment, amended permit to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife in December 2022. Uh, due to administrative reassignments in the department, we lost our biologist that we were working with. A uh, new biologist was assigned to the project. Um, he didn't start looking at the paperwork until March of 23. As a result, he has declared that the permit itself and the information, the reports, and the additional mitigation are fine. He was deemed to complete, but he will not issue the permit to us because he's considering Medea Creek as a prime bird nesting habitat, um, which in our case, we have to wait until August of this year, 2023 again, to get out of the bird nesting season. While there are additional methodologies to try to get around the bird nesting season for construction, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife is not willing to, set, uh, to consider that for a park picture. Uh, Four Seasons Landscape has been, very, has been very cooperative and understanding throughout the entire ordeal and is willing to delay the project for a lump sum fee of uh, $10,000. Uh, since the execution of the second change order for the project, um, to extend the agreement for a second time will exceed the district manager's um, authorized uh, contingency. Uh, the board originally authorized a $10,000 contingency. The first change order for the delay for the first time around was $10,000. They are requesting an additional $10,000 to delay the project until August of this year, um, which totals $20,000 and allowing for an additional $10,000 for additional changes in the work, which brings it up to $30,000. So staff is requesting that the district manager be allowed or allocated up to $30,000 for contingency on this project. Um, the funding for the project itself um, is part of a grant for the Media Creek Wildfire Resiliency Grant which is part of the California Wildfire Prevention Early Action Funding Plan. It is reimbursable, I did check with them. They will cover the additional change order money if we elect to delay the project. So therefore, staff is requesting that you allow the district manager up to and including $30,000 for contingency for this project. And I'm here to answer any questions you may have. accepting nominations to serve on the Board of Directors. Uh, the CRPD Nominating Committee has already 
um, selected a slate of recommended comments um, as part of their nominating process. They go out to each district and ask if anybody else has separate nominations from that. If the nominations are made, it's uh, the selection of the board is voted on by the entire membership at the CRP <coughs> conference in the middle of May. So with that, um, yeah, this is the opportunity for your board to select or nominate anybody to <coughs> serve on the board of directors of CARPD. I'd just like to point out that two of our past board members were president. Not three, I think. Jim Meredith, Dean Hostetler, and Mark. Mark. We're all presidents of CARPD. Um, they represent our district, special district parks. And so we know very well, and they have a new legislative person, and uh, they're doing a bag up job. This year's conference is in Yosemite. If anybody's going, I'm going. Okay, <coughs> good. Um, anyway, does anyone have an interest or? Any written communication? So no action on that item, Chair? No. Okay. Number 10, written communication. Staff has no written communication, no. <coughs> Reports by board members. Director Evan. So Vice Chair Freeman, if I could, it's probably not going to make a difference, but we're trying to stall for time a little bit here. If I could maybe go last in hopes that someone shows up. If not... Yeah, I was very careful to go alphabetically. Right. So there wouldn't be and, and, I, and I appreciate that. And um, so I'm asking, we're, we're hoping someone gets here. I think based on, we're getting through this meeting faster than expected, so it probably isn't going to happen. But um, if we could, just on the chance that that's like, maybe I could go last. Director Dunner. So are you asking me to speak slower? <laughs> no, please <laughs> not. <laughs> so tonight, my uh, daughter's cheer team at Royal High School, they uh, went undefeated in league and won the championships in overtime. That's what I was driving here to get at. <laughs> and it went, uh, not just went over in overtime, but uh, that's why my voice is a little scratchy tonight. I was very excited and cheering very loud myself. Uh, but back to official business. Uh, April Fool's Day went off really well. People are still complaining slash celebrating the Lemon Park Lemon Tree joke. Uh, who came up with that? Uh, Richard and his team, or okay. Richard and, and a small group of employees. I, I still had uh, some coworkers walk up to me and say, I'm mad at you, and like somehow blame me. I, I said, it's hilarious, come on. Wednesdays from seven to nine. Uh, but anyways, it was very popular. I met with a group that wants to expand pickleball. We're not surprised by that. And they wanted us to do two things. Uh, Besides what we've already discussed, we have some nets at uh, what was affectionately referred to as Lemon Park. If anyone plant the trees, we'll call it Lemon Park. They, there's some nets on the uh, dual use courts that are a little bit banged up. So they wanted to get an update on that. And then the second part is they would like to expand those and possibly make those two courts that are dual use into permanent pickleball. So they can increase the number of not just pickleball courts, but they think they could fit more in there. They're willing to help fundraise towards that goal. That's how serious they are about it. And I was very impressed because it was the middle of the week at 4.45 that courts were packed. So I, I told them we had assessed it before, but it's been a while. Like the, I couldn't tell them the recent numbers of tennis versus pickleball. So I said I'd uh, talk about it at the board meeting. And then uh, when we discuss pickleball in the future, I'll include that too. We had a soccer foundation meeting. Uh, some of the issues came up is the maintenance schedule and mowing. We definitely discussed that was really hard with all the rains, especially with riding equipment. But we know that they're partners and they're very interested in the maintenance, especially for Ranch Santa Susana Park and some of the fields, especially if they're going to be shut down for some more extensive maintenance. But they just expressed some concerns more than they had in the past about the, the maintenance level there. We had the Oak Park Committee meeting, but we're going to discuss that at another board meeting. And then uh, lastly, the disc golf community uh, at for Sycamore Park has asked to volunteer to clear some brush for us, uh, but we've also responded to them that we're willing to take that on. And I get that there's a balance in that, but uh, Zach, was there any update on that? Like if they wanted to do it, are there some rules they should follow or just tell me about that? Yeah, so we did have uh, back and forth communication with them. I know that they are willing to do some of that work. I had a brief conversation with one of the park, uh, Wayne's Park supervisors about that park. Um, I do think we have to find the balance between the 
stability of the erosion control that the, some of that brush does contribute to, um, but I'd be happy to work with Wayne and his staff on uh, the solution that works for both parties. We do have really long grass out there right now because of the range. Typically, it's not that large, but I do know that the disc golfers would prefer probably a completely shaved, cleared park, and I think there's a balance we need to find between us and what the, the park's folks need to have for, uh, for some stability out there. Zach, is there a possibility of you could reach out to them and say, this is when we're doing it. If you're available, come help. Uh, obviously, we don't want to make staff work on a Sunday if that's when they wanted to do it. But also, uh, then we could give them guidance, like, don't cut down everything. Uh, yeah, we, we could certainly coordinate to have a conversation about the best way to tackle that. Yeah. Thank you. That's it for me. Oh. Yes, um, I had uh, uh, Ventura County Special Districts. The speaker was Tony Goff from Cayegas, and he gave some talk about, talked about the drought. It was interesting. Um, there was also a discussion about those two assembly bills, which you know more about than I do. Yeah. So we should talk about those. Um, I was at the Historical Society meeting, too, and the Civil War event was canceled. And the reason it was, a couple of reasons, it was that the ground was too wet from all the recent rains to do anything. And also, there was apparently a shooting incident in Riverside, where as a Civil War reenactment, and it was, it was kind of like that incident with Alec Baldwin where they thought it was a blank, it was a real bullet in the gun. And it, as I think the, the, the victim survived, but it was still kind of an incident with investigation. Was it a bullet? Or? I just want to clarify from what I understand, it was, it was just a blank that didn't fire right and oh, hurt somebody. Okay, so it had nothing to do with a real bullet at all. Okay. So I want to make that perfectly release. clear. Yeah. It's, it's an complete. injury caused from a blank that didn't function properly. That's as not, I understand. It. I didn't know that they could do that. It almost sounded like the perfect murder. So the group, the group that was going to, the yeah. reenactment group that was going to do it at ours, it was the week before ours, and they weren't able to make ours because of that incident. Oh, that's too bad. But the ground was also wet, too wet to really, you know, people would have got stuck in the mud also. So, well, anyway, that was too bad. So the decision was to, I wasn't at the meeting, so no, I believe it's but the decision was to cancel our event until yeah. the facts were in. Was that it? I think they just canceled it. My understanding was that it was just canceled till next year. Yeah. The group of actors that was supposed to come yeah. to ours pulled out of it because of the accident. Oh, the accident we so we didn't have anybody to do the reenactment. <coughs> oh yeah, I mean, I don't know if they did. If the, the group of an actors wants to do it okay. like in two months, okay, that'd be nice. That's too bad because yeah, I mean, for the Strathern Community Board, it's a big fundraiser. Yeah, that's so, really too bad. Yeah, they're gonna feel that. They could do it again in a few months. That would be nice. Um, Pat Havens' Pat Havens um, <coughs> event on May twentieth, which is the last day of the CARPD conference. So I I don't know if I'm going to leave early or not. But anyway, that's the twentieth. That should be good. Um, I was over to Rancho Simi to to learn how to use the AED devices, but. What happened is for some, for some, there was some snafu and they didn't have the training AED device. So that was a little disappointing, except they had the dummies for CPR, so we were able to practice CPR on the dummies. That was good. I'll have Ms. Pennington address that real quickly. That'd be nice, thank you. Yeah, it was advertised as a sidewalk CPR event, so that's oh. what they were training on with CPR. It was kind of the reveal and the kickoff of the AED devices in the parks, but the actual training was <laughs> sidewalk CPR for the general public. Okay, because I got an email saying, come and learn how to use the, the AED, they'll be there. So, I, I got... I if that was I miscommunicated, but it was sidewalk CPR okay. was the intention of the program. Then it was fine. Okay, Sorry but I'm that. glad to know that it wasn't some kind of snap. No. Because that was, that was the, I got an email saying, come and, uh, this this Saturday to come and learn how to use the AEDs. Uh, great, that would be a good thing to know. Sorry so, about that. We can okay. certainly arrange that training. We have devices throughout the district, so we can. Um, um, yeah, I was thinking, that would be kind of nice just to learn how to use them, I suppose. Although they sound like they'd be pretty self-explanatory. They kind of have to be because you're panicked when you're using them, right? So, yeah, they there's like a verbal instructions that are given from the device. Yeah, they'd have to be they'd have to be really easy to use. 
Okay. Well, I'm glad I got sorry for that yeah. misunderstanding. It was a miscommunication. Um, I uh, did the tour event with Janice Carbon and her staff. That was good. It was excellent. It was a rainy day, but it was okay. And um, I also went up to the Outswitch uh, exhibit. We went a couple weeks ago at the Reagan. I encourage everybody to do that because it's uh, it's really kind of a it's educational and very emotional also. And we spent five hours contemplating unspeakable evil, which is not an easy thing to do, but it's there till August. Go see it. And that's it. Thank you. You want to wait? I was at Ventura County Special Districts Association and Tara, who is the general manager of the Camarillo Healthcare District, is now the chair. So all the meetings will be held there in Camarillo and uh, very handy compared to going to Oxnard or the Harvard District. <laughs> anyway, it was a very good meeting. And number two, uh, we had the meeting uh, with Janice Parvin and her staff here, and she brought her whole staff, and I, she was very engaged, and I think the staff and her learned a lot, and one of the things that was exciting to come out of that, that the staff said, is the city of Moore Park's working on an Arroyo Greenway project to pick up where we're on our west end, so that they can have it all the way through Moore Park. And so ultimately, maybe the county will pick it up and it could go all the way to the sea. I mean, it, it's a lead to the future. It's a kind of an exciting concept. I saw that they were working on it, and I didn't see, I, I know it would go through Moore Park, but would it connect Simi and Moore Park? Yeah. Like you could ride from Simi Valley all the way through Moore Park? Yes. I mean, that's just great that they're doing that. Um, maybe they'll be able to get some grant funding as well. They have that area along the right over the railroad bridges through that industrial. So I don't know how simple that will be, but um, it's great. And secondly, uh, we met with Jeff Carell, and one member is chief deputy. And I think it was extremely beneficial to him because he's responsible for Oak Park and he understood better the organizational structure of our committee and the MAC and how we came to be part of Oak Park. And so I think he very much appreciated uh, uh, the time we took. And staff did a great job on the presentation, both for Janice and for Jeff. So I think it was time well spent. And I think um, it was a good benefit for the district. And that's it. Uh, I, I, earlier, I, I didn't mention it, but Ed, I think you did a good job of this State of the City speech. Uh, it, it was well put together. It definitely focused on all the different aspects of a park district. I really appreciate you had the people that did the work because it's board members, you know, there's staff members that do the work day in, day out. I appreciate that approach to it, put a human face on it. And I also like that uh, it was funny. So good job on the State of the City speech. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go in. Um, I'm gonna go in reverse chronological order. Um, went to the um, boys and uh, girls club um, uh, gala auction. Um, uh, raised a lot of money. It was a great event. Um, got to got to throw props to my wife Jill, who was on the committee for that, and um, uh, had a lot of input on, on the theme, uh, which was the Kentucky Derby, um, and um, it was uh, it, you know it was. The attendance was up over last year, the amount of auction items, the amount of money raised. Um, it was just a great event. Um, had the Oak Park committee meeting. Um, like Brian, um, since it's going to be um, part of, our, I believe it's part of our next meeting, I'm gonna withhold most of my comments until then. The only one thing I'm going to mention is, um, again, it was a meeting that lasted over three hours and probably at least 45 minutes of it was taken up by um, a presentation um, regarding um, a stormwater monitoring station, which really wasn't the main reason the committee members were there. And um, I do appreciate the fact that our presentations tonight were um, nice and tight and, and right to the point. Um, I, I, it's something we have to keep working on. Um, 
Uh, so I, I'll just mention that as far as the other aspects of the meeting, um, I'll, I'll just address those when we, when we discuss them. I think it's more efficient that way and, and just fairer at every time. And then finally, thank you for the comments, uh, Brian. I, I do want to talk about the state of the city and um, that just so everybody understands, it, it was a team effort and, and that's what I want to, um, that's what I want to point out most. Um, we're proud of the outcome uh, in terms of the, um, uh, you know, the applause we got from the audience, the comments that we got afterwards. Um, still having, still having people um, tell us about how well it went. Uh, there were three main goals. One is um, we've become a district that really is about the people, and we wanted to honor the people in terms of. Um, some of our employees who sometimes don't get the recognition, as well as members of the public who aren't, members of the public who aren't even um, uh, part of our uh, staff or district uh, who have contributed so much. And, um, you know, that part went really well, and you could see it in terms of, uh, in terms of the people we did mention. You could see it in their eyes how grateful they were. Um, uh, the second thing is we wanted to advertise our park district. And again, just based on the feedback we got and the comments we got, um, uh, we more than accomplished that. And then the third one is probably just one that um, Richard Bummo and I appreciate, but... Um, hey, I, he's walking down the hall if you want to wait. Oh, cool. I it's saw him pass through okay. the window. So, <laughs> the third thing... All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hang here for a second. Sorry. Okay. <coughs> oh, Okay. I did not know what Ed was delayed for. I was just playing along with it. <laughs> I tried to look at his notes over there, but it was a little bit far. Uh, there's some surprises back here, I think. But uh, I'm looking forward to finding out what this is. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm just going to, we think he's coming in here shortly, right? I think he's in the restroom. How's everybody doing? <laughs> um, you know what I mean? This isn't like me to just sit here and. Uh, but since we're right on, since we're ready to talk about Richard. I'll briefly mention as a suggestion, Dan, is Ed had mentioned the length of a meeting. One possible <laughs> suggestion is to, I know we're not going to discuss that length tonight, run something by the chair of the committee and say, would you like this to go to your full advisory committee? But maybe the chair will say yes, or maybe the chair will say no. If there's routine business, that might be a way of doing it. We'll talk about that later. Right. And, and I, the, the comment on presentation, just to respond to Brian, it has not just to do with the Oak Park Committee meetings, but even our own meetings, although I have to say the staff just did a great job with the presentation tonight. All right, so um, back, to, back to the state of the city. Um, it really, uh, what I was saying before Richard walked in, it was a team effort, and there, there were really three goals in my mind. One is to honor, honor the people, um, which I explained was um, some of our employees, as well as non-employees of the public, um, uh, the second was to advertise our park district. Again, based on comments we got, I think all of that went really well. And then I was about to say, in the third, um, uh, that I, I think probably only my co-presenter, Richard Lemmel, and I really appreciate, but um, the city came up with a theme of It's a New Day, and when we, when we heard that, we were just thrilled because we thought, that's us. I mean, it, it is a new day. And um, of all the presentations, um, uh, I feel that you know we um, we were most true and, and most paid tribute to that theme um, really effectively. Um, you know, I, I went what we did what we did different this year instead of the standard um, you know slideshow with bullet points that it seems like people just their eyes glaze over it is um, we, we decided to do tell the story through our people. And, and I, I went to Richard with the idea, and, and I, I thought I was going to get shot down, and, and he was so excited about it. In fact, I'll tell you, I'm the one that, as it went along, started having doubts about it. And he kept telling me, no, this is going to work. This is going to work. And, and I'm not going to go through all of them. But it, it seemed like every day we were faced with a new challenge where we had to, where we had to change the script or change how we were going to do it. Um, and and I, I really have to say with Richard, I, we, we both spent a lot of hours individually on it and we spent a lot of time meeting with each other. Um, uh, we're proud of it and, and you know, we, we put a lot of work into it and, and I really appreciate that. We, we told the story um, uh, through stories and, and through pictures. Um, um, you know, 
I did the story part, Richard did the pictures part, and, and um, you know, I watched it back, and I have to tell you, about 24 hours before the presentation, I was walking our chocolate lab, Tamu, and um, I just, all of a sudden, my sinuses just exploded with allergies, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, I felt like crap when I was delivering that presentation. Um, but I had confidence in it because of the, of the great slideshow that Richard put together to support it, and um, uh, we, were, we were just really proud of it. We're, we're, we're thrilled with the feedback that we got. We, we took a chance, we took a new approach, um, and it worked, and most of all, I, I really think it did advertise our park district. There's one other person who was part of the team who I really want to thank as well. Um, you know, we didn't have to, we had photos, so we didn't have to get the people who were mentioning um, to the state of the city, but we wanted to have them there. And, and we got them all there, and that was thanks to um, Sandy's um, uh, efforts. And we appreciate it so much. And I, I'm gonna add one other thing uh, in terms of um, thanking Sandy. Um, this really was a difficult process at times and, and, and stressful. Um, and sometimes you find out about an act of kindness that someone does after the fact, but it meant so much and made so much difference. Um, and that was Sandy, you have such a good heart. Um, so anyway, thank you, um, Richard, for being um, a, an outstanding co-presenter. Sandy, thank you for your contributions, and um, I, I think it's one we'll all remember. And, and um, uh, even, though, even though there were some challenges along the way, it worked out really well. So I have something for each of you. It's just really small, but I did want to say thank you. So. Um, second full-time park ranger, um, Ara, and we'll get him out meeting all of you in short time. We did make an offer to a third full-time park ranger, but that person had uh, some career choices and balancing to do, and they uh, did ultimately take the job, so we're still on the hunt for a third full-time park ranger. Um, the Museum of Ventura County is uh, doing a celebration in the fall of the city's, or the county's 150th anniversary. Um, we did meet with uh, representatives of the Ventura, Museum of Ventura County, and we're going to be doing some joint uh, programming between Strathern and the uh, County Museum in the fall. More to come on that. Ed, thank you for the State of the City. I just want to be half the hat uh, staff. Thanks for making this look good. I thought it was a very positive event, and your message was very positive. So on behalf of the staff, thank you for that as well. Uh, just to follow up, Oak Park Dog Park signage. Uh, if you recall, we had gotten uh, several complaints regarding folks accessing the Oak Park Dog Park by vehicle that were not um, handicapped individuals. Our staff has done a good job uh, enforcing and reminding people and educating folks. Uh, I did hear back from a couple of the folks and they thank us for our efforts. That being said, we are still in the process of reorienting the signage out there so it's a little bit clearer and will also allow us to enforce um, should the uh, issue come up again. Uh, uh, Elaine, you had brought up the fence at Sinaloa Golf Course. Um, we have gotten quotes on fixing that fence and that work is in process. So we're following up on that. We did have a very positive meeting, staff and I, with the girls uh, softball uh, representatives. Jeannie Gooding is back involved and it sounds like they want to reinvigorate their passion for their league and uh, grow that league again. So we ta uh, met with them and talked about how we could accommodate and help them do that over the next uh, year or so. Uh, the Oak Park Committee meeting, that will be uh, detailed on your uh, May 3rd agenda as we do. There are a couple of, uh, they did make a couple of advisory recommendations for the board to act on and those will come back for action by your board on May 3rd. Um, the outreach for the budget meeting will be done next week. We talked about uh, inviting various community members and stakeholders in for the budget meeting on May 10th. We're going to do a press release outreach. We're going to do 
uh, direct letters to the stakeholders and also a few calls for myself. So that'll happen next week to make sure we get uh, quite a few folks here that can give you guys input on priorities and what the community is thinking in terms of our capital improvement program and our budget. I did want to say thank you to Teresa, the AEDs that we the board authorized uh, a number of months ago uh, were installed. Uh, we have two of them now. We're looking to maybe do two more down the road, but we were going to try two. Uh, Teresa had an event um, surrounding the rollout of the AEDs, and um, also I expect uh, some coverage in the ACORN of that event. So thank you, Teresa, and your team for getting that project done. I think the community appreciated it. Just a few more items here. I did want to note that we've got a couple of new sponsors for some of our items. Uh, we got a $10,000 commitment from Gigabit. They're involved in the broadband um, project in town um, and that is they're going to sponsor uh, some of our youth sports programs ten thousand dollars and i wanted to note toyota has uh, re-upped for sponsoring the concert in the park series this summer twelve thousand five hundred dollars which is they've increased that from past years this is their third year doing it so i wanted to give props to richard uh, that's a couple of them now but richard uh, we've done a good job getting sponsors and contributions to some of our programming so thank you for that uh, we did sit on a Bra uh, brown act uh, education today teresa and sandy and i, I i'm proud to say that we are doing fine with that we just kind of validated that our interpretation of the law is accurate. There's a couple things that they recommended that I may bring back to the board for thought, just real small stuff in terms of protocol and making sure we're set up for the new Brown Act requirements. But overall, we're uh, good and we're compliant with that effort. Thanks to Brian on that. Uh, Earth Day, uh, in addition to the awards, we have tree planting at Strathern at 1.30 on Friday, uh, this Friday, right? tree planting event at 1.30 on Friday, and then we have our Earth Day event at Chumash Park from 3.30 to 5.30 with the park beautification project, some trail cleaning, and also some vendors there um, that are encouraging, uh, similar to what we did last year. This is this Friday? Yeah. And then finally, uh, our egg scramble, I just wanted to follow up on that. The staff does a great job at that event. It's one of our larger events each year in terms of attendance. Uh, we did add an uh, alt rec program egg hunt on Friday night. So those kids that uh, need a little bit more space and a little bit a uh, little quieter environment, the staff did that on Friday evening. Um, Saturday from 6 a.m. to 12, we had three staff and 12, 20 volunteers. We had 1,500 kids uh, who collected 13,000 eggs that our staff and volunteers put out. And we uh, collected 200 pounds of food for the Samaritan Center. So uh, um, that was great. And that was the Simi Valley event in Oak Park, the same thing. Uh, Saturday, we had about 750 folks attend the event. They collected 12,000 eggs. Uh, we gave out 50 prizes, and there was uh, five staff and uh, about 20 volunteers out there as well. So just want to commend the staff. That is an awesome event, and we are the primary egg hunters providers in town and thank you to the staff and all those that attended and I believe that concludes that um, upcoming board meeting the next board meeting is May 3rd uh, the only I bet uh, potentially the equestrian item coming back that evening remember we were talking to the equestrian folks about the maintenance project and an operating agreement and then we need to do a legal notice for uh, potential assessment on that evening that's all I have on that agenda right now and then May 10th is going to be uh, focused on the budget um, that evening uh, May 3rd, I assume you're also going to have the Oak Park report right? Oak Park report thank you I didn't have that on here yet um, yes, May 3rd, we'll have the Oak Park Report and Equestrian. Um, upcoming uh, committee meetings, there are none scheduled other than the regular Historical Society meeting. And that concludes my report. Excuse me, the Oak Park meeting, will that be like the in-person? Or are we going to try and zoom in because of the sound? We're going to do it from here. The Board of Directors will be in person, but the public from Oak Park and here can attend via Zoom. We'll be here. Yeah, we made a decision to do that from here rather than going to Oak Park. Folks wanted the Zoom access, which we can't provide out there. And, and that, that, that ultimately was the wish of the committee. Correct. Any other further questions? Dan, at that meeting, I have some questions about fish. 
And so I'm just giving staff a heads up because I don't know who will answer those, like which fish we're allowed to, which fish are native. But maybe uh, we'll talk about fish before that meeting because I have some questions about it. Okay. Come on up. That's great. This was the first meeting of the new people, right, in Oak Park. So there was an education. Uh, we met with each of the new members and oriented them prior to the meeting. Um, so we took them through the, the committee and the process and the park district. So we had prepared them individually. But yes, it was their first meeting that they attended, yes, the new members. Good. Item 13, closed session. Now five of eight. We'll go into closed session. Let's take public comment on closed session if we could real quick. First, I think I'm supposed to announce the, the okay. closed session items. Um, there's quite a few, so bear with me, folks. Um, so item A, closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.8, conference with real property negotiators. The property in question is real property in the city of Simi Valley, lot 352 of track 3467, recorded in book 132, pages 21 to 39. The agency negotiator is the district manager. And the negotiating parties are Ho Investment Company, LLC. And what's under negotiation are the price, terms, conditions regarding a potential purchase, exchange, or lease of real property. Item B, is it, uh, we can go through all of them and then ask you questions. You can probably sum yeah. can okay. summarize the well, there are also the, lot, the yeah. negotiations, right, I'll do that. Uh, the closed session, uh, item B is the closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.95. The claimant is John Lundgren, and the agency claimed against is the Rancho Senior Recreation and Park District. Now, items C through F are closed session items pursuant to government code section 54957.6, conference with labor negotiator. Um, the agency negotiator in all instances is the district manager and director of administration. Um, and the employee organizations for C, it's the Rancho Senior Recreation and Park District Middle Management Association. For D, it is the Rancho Simi Employees Association. For E, it is the Maintenance and Grounds Association. And for item F, it is the unrepresented employees. Public comment? Does so anyone have a comment? Um, there's no one in the chambers, but does anyone on Zoom have a comment on any items that are under the closed session? Hearing none, we will go into closed session. Now, looks if you could mute us. Uh, Press. Okay. The attorney will report on the closed session. Um, on item B, uh, the board has decided to accept the claim of John Lundgren. Um, there were no other actions taken on any other items. Any other business to come before the board? Meeting is adjourned at 8.15. Thank you. Recording stopped.